KPFA can be here for you. We're asking you to return the favor so that KPFA can be here for them. Push us closer to making that extra thousand by becoming a sustainer right now at 1-800-439-5732. Let's go back to our special two-hour broadcast of East Bay yesterday on organizing against police violence and police terror in the era before Black Lives Matter. I could just end this episode here, but there's one more story I really want you to hear. So stay with me a little bit longer, okay? All right. On the night of May 25th, 2020, George Floyd, a black man, died after a white Minneapolis cop kneeled on his neck for almost nine minutes. In the following days and weeks, the United States saw more protests, and in some cases civil unrest, than it had in decades. Dozens of marches and rallies have erupted throughout Oakland and the rest of the East Bay and are continuing to happen consistently as of the taping of this podcast. In the midst of this national reckoning, Mayor Libby Schaff held a virtual meeting on the night of June 11th to discuss the intertwined issues of structural racism and policing. One of the speakers was Lieutenant Fred Shavies, a black officer who was born and raised in Oakland and leads the department's race equity group. At the end of the meeting, these were Lieutenant Shavies' closing remarks. There is some training that we do that hasn't changed from the 70s, which is just not okay. Um, and so talking about the how policing has, has, has evolved from slave catching to, to, to reconstruction policing, to Jim Crow policing, to civil rights era policing, all the way up in the same. So we think about, uh, there are some folks who I think someone on maybe the mayor talked about uh, the things that have occurred over the last 30 years. But I would, again, I would argue that it's been 400 years and a lot of things have not changed. And so we have to continue to to try, like we have to continue to try to train folks. And if we cease to try, nothing will get better. And so I think we have to continue keeping our eye on the goal and working toward progress. And again, uh, I'm hopeful, like Chief Cespedes and others, that, that this momentum will continue. But to say, let's give up and let's don't do it anymore, would be quitting in a sense, and I disagree with that. Listening to these words, I just kept thinking, what if things don't really change? What if we're still stuck in the cycle? It's just bigger and louder this time. But then I started thinking about the dozens, maybe hundreds of videos I'd watched just that week showing young people, many of whom were probably at their first protest, getting beaten and pepper sprayed and shot with rubber bullets by police. And you know what? I don't think those kids are going to let things go back to quote unquote normal again. Why do I think that? Because witnessing all the brutality reminded me of a story I heard from Tony Fiodolid. Remember, he was the lawyer from Central Legal who worked on the Barlow Benavides Committee. At the very end of our interview, Tony told me what motivated him to devote so much of his career to challenging police abuse. And I'm going to warn you, especially if you're listening with kids present, this story is upsetting and there are some curse words. But I want to share it because I think it captures how a lot of people are feeling about the police right now, especially those who have been out in the streets, shedding blood and tears. Tony, you don't have to answer this one if you don't want to, but I'm wondering if you can tell me what happened when you were 13. Um, Okay, I mean, I'll tell you. Um, It's, uh, you know, it, uh, I was um, running home having played basketball, I, I, I was such a good kid. I tell you, it was, it was about 10 minutes to 10 uh, and I'm sprinting home because, uh, because I did not want to violate Kofi. And by the way, uh, I was an altar boy. So I was scheduled to do math at, at six o'clock the following morning. So, uh, so anyway, I heard a, a roar, an engine and a SDPD and uh, they ran up on the on the sidewalk and cut me off and I, I, I somewhat bumped into it but I didn't fall down, you know, and I jumped back and you know so anyway they cuffed me 
and uh, put me in the back and uh, in the back of the car. And um, they said that I had committed a burglary. And so they drove me not to one, but to four different places. Uh, in one, the first one was North Park, and I just kept getting further and further away. And finally, I was in Hillcrest, and they kept doing um, curbside show-ups. So they would, you know, cuff, stand me there, and people who I guess had called in a hot prowl or, or whatever, burglary, they would ask them to identify me, and, and no one did. And I remember the last time, I, I, it was probably around midnight, and uh, there were two cops, both of them white, both of them very big. And uh, and I probably weighed, I'm sure I weighed less than 100 pounds. So anyway, an older, an elderly white couple was called by them. I guess they called in a hot prowl or something. And they walked up to me and they looked at me and they just started browbeating the officers. What do you guys think you're doing? This young man should be home with his family. What are you? What dare you? And on and on and on. And these cops go, oh, I guess we, we've kind of played this one out as far as we can. Put me back in the car, started driving me home. And the, and the passenger, the guy in the passenger seat, basically just, he, st- he was very profane with me. He said, you, you, know, you, you know, you beaner her and this and that. And he said, uh, you're probably going to get away with this one, but how often do you burglarize? And, you know, I was a very, you know, respectful of authority, so on and so forth. Um, but I also, you know, I knew how to be profane. And I and I lost it, and I cussed him out. And uh, he told a guy, it was, yeah, it's, this is, I'll, I'll bring you up to date. I just, the biggest mass demonstration uh, that we've had in San Diego in a long time went right underneath the university slash Park Boulevard bridge. But well, that was exactly where this happened. So they pulled over. There's a, there's a ramp, a street that goes up to the top. So it's very isolated. You know, it's a residential area. And, they, they, and the guy told me, the guy, the passenger said, pull over. He, I was handcuffed behind my back. So he grabbed me by the handcuffs. And mind you, I was less than a hundred pounds. So he could lift me. And he, first he slapped me like three times. Just bam, bam, bam. He's smart ass. You know, you think you got a smart knock and you get slapping me. So then the guy pulls over and he pulls me out of the car, carried me to the back of the car and held me about three feet off the ground. Again, you know, by the cuffs. So my hands are, you know, my, my arms are bent up towards my you know, shoulder blades and he dropped me. The first time, you know, I, I wasn't ready for it. So I hit my face and then did it a couple more times. And uh, I was turning by then. So, so it wasn't it wasn't as extreme. And then the other cop had enough. And he said, that's enough. You know, just stop this and uncuffed me and said, get on home. And so I went home. And uh, uh, <laughs> to say the least, it changed me. It, it changed me. I developed uh, a, a passionate uh, dislike for for bad. You need to understand something. I have family members that are uh, police officers, and I have the greatest respect for them. And I have many, many friends over my professional career that I have made who are law enforcement. So I don't indict them all, but I know that that racist, malicious, mean individual is there. And so we have to get rid of them. We have to make law enforcement something that does truly protect and serve all people. And so I'm sure I internalized a lot of that. It's why I, I, I eventually, when I, the last thing I did in my professional career was, was uh, some wrongful death cases against police that were uh, um, that were killing uh, Mexicans on the border. Uh, it was the San Diego Border Crimes Task Force. And uh, and so a lot of cases were litigated and I, I was involved in yeah. those cases. And uh, because I guess part in, in no small part motivated both by my own personal experience and then, uh, you know, what I became uh, involved with in Barlow's case. 
to an extended broadcast of East Bay yesterday. An incredibly timely episode about the history of organizing against police violence and police terror here in the East Bay where we live, where we broadcast from, in the era before Black Lives Matter. We couldn't think of something more important to understanding the present moment that we're in and what the hurdles and the obstacles facing people working for change, putting their lives on the line for change right now are. So instead of cutting it down to fit in a one hour time slot on KPFA, which is what we would have had to do, this thing is so long, uh, we decided to make it into a two hour special. And because that's not enough, we're also trying to use this time to raise money for the radio station that brings you this kind of broadcasting. Um, if you value what you just heard on East Bay yesterday, what you get every day on this non-commercial listener supported radio station, we're asking you to come through in the final minutes of this hour at 1-800-439-5732. Um, we're, we're facing an unusual and unorthodox challenge this hour. We have one listener who's offered to throw an extra thousand dollars at KPFA. If we can sign up enough sustainers, people who make ongoing monthly commitments to KPFA, uh, that their commitments total $100 per month. Just seconds ago, uh, I believe it was a pledge from Sarah in Pacific Grove that took us to the $75 a month mark. So in the few minutes that we have remaining this hour, our goal is to get a couple more of you signed up as sustainers to get $25 a month more in sustaining pledges. That'll help stabilize us in the long term. And Joseph in Benicia will make sure we have an extra thousand to pay our bills in the present. The phone number is 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-HEY-KPFA or online at kpfa.org. Liam? Brian, uh, you know, now that we've listened to that whole episode, I just want to take a super, super quick break from uh, fundraising right now just to explain for a second why I was motivated to to put together that, uh, you know, hour and a half long episode about the history of organizing against police violence in the East Bay. And it all goes back to early June. I was in the streets of Oakland at a Black Lives Matter rally, and it was one of the biggest protests I've ever seen in Oakland in my entire life. And the amazing thing about that march was that it was organized by high school students. I was standing there watching thousands and thousands of people who were 14, 15, 16, 17, walking by, uh, you know, demanding an end to police brutality. And they were so passionate and so motivated, but so young. You know, it, I, it, it dawned on me that a lot of these uh, protesters were just children, even as recently as the era of, you know, the Oscar Grant uh, protest and uprising. And so, you know, I really wanted to zoom out and you, you make an accessible way for people to understand that this kind of organizing, the you know the people, the idea of people getting together to challenge police violence, it doesn't just go back ten or twenty or thirty years. It goes back many, many decades, even before the Black Panthers, as we heard in that episode. You know, as far back as the the nineteen forties, and probably even before that. There's you know stories that I couldn't even dig up because they've been lost to the you know the winds of time. Um, and I'm just so grateful that KPFA uh, you know has bent the rules a little bit to given me the space to share the story today because I do feel like there's this whole new generation of organizers out there who, um, you know, it's important to, to recognize the people that have been laying down this foundation and, uh, you know, building towards the Black Lives Matter movement for all these years. And once again, you know, we wouldn't be able to reach that many years um, just through the podcast alone. KPFA expands my audience, you know, by a hundredfold, maybe more. And I know this this station has a really powerful signal, a really big antenna, and it reaches people all over Northern California and Central California. And in order to, you know, keep that signal going, in order to pay the electricity bills and uh, everything else that needs to be covered to uh, keep KPFA on the air and have a home for East Bay yesterday on, on the FM uh, dial, uh, we do need people to call in and uh, help donate. And right now is the time, you know, we've only got about 15 minutes left in this hour. And uh, that means that we've only got about 15 minutes left to hit that 
uh, challenge, which, as you mentioned, we will get an extra thousand dollars if we can get ten. Uh, or I'm sorry, a hundred dollars in total in sustaining donations. So what that breaks down to is if ten people call in and you know pledge ten dollars a month, or if twenty people call in and pledge five dollars a month, you know that will add up. It'll put us over the the edge, and we'll we'll make our goal again. And if you want to call in and and be a part of that um, group of folks that are going to help us reach that goal. You can dial 1-800-439-5732. Once again, that's 800-439-5732 or or, Hey KPFA, 1-800-HEY-KPFA. And, uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't, we don't, like if you can afford $100 or $1,000, that's great. But even if you can only afford, you know, $5 a month, that'll get us a little bit closer and, uh, it would just mean a lot to to Brian and I because we've been we've been working hard <laughs> during this segment to to hit this goal and like uh, I said earlier we've got an unbroken record so help us uh, keep this this streak going because I don't want to be uh, sad at the end of this hour I want I want to feel good about all the work we've put in to uh, keep KPFA on the air. Don't break Liam. Call 1-800-439-5732. The good news, Liam, is that while you were talking, a couple more pledges hit our tally, and I believe it was Michael calling in from Stockton, speaking of the reach of our signal, uh, who got us up to $90 a month. So now it would take just one pledge uh, as a sustainer in the amount of $10 a month, and boom, $1,000 extra for KPFA. Love it. The phone number is 1-800-439-5732. And, you know, think about 10 bucks a month. Um, that's less than, than what you pay to go out to a movie lonesome by yourself these days. And well, I'm not no one's going out to movies these days. But that's my point. You <laughs> could just take your movie budget and hand it to KPFA and we'd get an extra $1,000 at 1-800-439-5732. I mean, you think about the, the, the bills that, that we kind of pile up on a monthly basis without even really thinking about it. Uh, basic cable runs you about 50 bucks these days. That's $600 a year. Uh, your cell provider, depending on how many gigs you're paying for, you might be out of pocket 70, 80 bucks almost a thousand dollars a year if you if you got a local newspaper subscription first of all bless you you're you're supporting local journalists second of all uh, Mm -hmm. odds are the hedge fund that owns that newspaper is cutting reporter and editor jobs every year so that every year you get less and less news for a more and more expensive subscription three four five hundred dollars a year depending on where you live um think about what it's worth to have kpfa on these public airwaves um you know, in, injecting the kind of perspective, the history, the deep analysis, the community conversations onto these public airwaves, tying us together as a community when we can't come together physically. Do what you can to make sure that we have the strength to continue, because I can't think of a more important moment in history for us to have KPFA. The phone number is one 800 439 Five seven three two. Uh, join Isabel, who just pledged from Oakland. One eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. One eight hundred. Hey KPFA, or online at www.kpfa.org. Liam, Brian, I love. Uh, not only do I love get hearing that these donations are rolling in, but I love it when there's a little message along with the donation too. You know, someone just uh, sent me a shout out from the Rhino Picasso. I don't know exactly what that means, but thank you, sir. Um, you know, hearing that people you know are grateful to to have East Bay yesterday on KPFA really warms my heart. You know, I do the show mostly by myself, working independently. So getting getting the love, you know, from the listeners uh, really means a lot to me and it's encouraging. And also, you know, a couple minutes ago, Brian, you were talking about, you know, how KPFA has really been a pioneer in bringing a lot of like the counterculture and these challenging ideas to people. You know, you were referring to Alan Watts. I was actually just listening to uh, another podcast a couple weeks ago that was talking about how Maximum Rock and Roll, the uh, so-called Bible of punk rock music got to start on uh, KPFA. And it made me think about how, you know, I was, uh, you know, a 15 year old in high school many years ago, back in the 90s. And one of the first things that turned me on to, you know, underground music and punk rock and, and, you know, Challenging capitalism was maximum rock and roll. And where did that come from? 
once again, KPFA, you know, that was on the air, as many people probably don't even know, back in the late 70s and early 80s. So, so many pioneering, you know, journalists, musicians, uh, entertainers, thinkers, speakers have got their... Um, have gotten their start on KPFA or share their thoughts on these airwaves. And you know what? I can't wait for this uh, pandemic to be over with so KPFA can start doing live events again. I mean, that's another great service that KPFA provides for the community is, you know, bringing people like Ta-Nehisi Coates and, uh, you know, the KPFA has brought Noam Chomsky to town, Howard Zinn back when, you know, they were still touring and all, you know, so many great people, uh, Angela Davis, you know, it's just the amount, the caliber of intellectuals that KPFA has brought to the East Bay and the Bay Area to give public talks and have these public conversations is so impressive. And, you know, that's another great service that the, the, the station provides that I just can't wait to uh, for it to be able to get back to. But it's only going to happen if KPFA can pay the bills. So uh, what we need right now is for people to uh, call in with those donations. We've got less than 10 minutes left to hit our goal. I think we've got, we've got about seven, eight minutes yeah. left and the clock is ticking. So if you're listening right now, 1-800-439-5732. That's 1-800-439-5732 or hey, KPFA. Brian, what do you think? Are we going to do it? I don't know, but I got a message from another listener, uh, Joe Pledged from Petaluma, and says, The other day, our radio dial had been bumped, and for a few minutes, I just could not find KPFA. Oh, no. I thought, oh, no, this is it. They're finally gone, and I never did get around to donating. So relieved that it's not too late. I don't know what we'd do without you. Don't experience the kind of terror that Joe just experienced because he or she, I'm not sure which, had not donated. You, you can take care of that. You can ensure that if we go off the air, we will do it with your pledge in our bank account at 1-800-439-5732 <laughs> or online at www.kpfa.org. Um, just a few minutes left in the hour. Uh, and one of the timeliest uh, programs that a history show could possibly put on. 1-800-439-5732. And because Leah mentioned it, um, I, I will throw in the, the other sweetener that the station has offered. You know, customarily during fun drives, we offer a lot of gifts. Uh, we, we, we create CDs, recordings of speeches, collections that we put on USB drives. We pack them up. We mail them out to people who've given us money. And we can't do that. Um, our our mailroom is, is a small space in our studios, except for an extraordinarily small crew of skeleton staff who are not allowed to be in the same room at the same time. Uh, KPFA studios are basically closed as a safety concern. Uh, and that includes our mailing operation. So instead, what we did was we curated a collection uh, of some of the most powerful speakers that Leah mentioned, speaking on race and racism, that KPFA has brought to the stage. Uh, we rat remastered the full-length audio recordings of those events, along with the Q&A that only a KPFA audience can deliver. We've put them together into what we're calling our Abolish Racism Collection. And we're distributing it digitally. Um, we send you a link. You get every talk. You can stream it. You can download it. You can copy and paste a link into whatever podcast app you use on your phone, and, and all of them will pop up as a feed. And you can take them with you. And we're giving them to everybody, everybody who pledges any amount. Whether you are pledging five bucks or 5,000, you will get KPFA's Abolish Racism Collection. And if you do it in the next four, three and a half minutes, you'll be showing your support for KPFA and for East Bay yesterday at 1-800-439-5732. In that collection, Roxanne Dunbar-Ortiz presenting an indigenous people's history of the United States. Anti-racist historian Ibram X. Kendi on the history of racist ideas. Paul Ortiz presenting his book, An African-American and Latinx History of the United States. Pulitzer Prize winner Isabel Wilkerson on the Great Migration. Uh, Angela Davis on stage with our own Walter Turner from Africa Today and Johanna Fernandez presenting a new collection of writings from Mumia Abu-Jamal. MacArthur Genius Grant winner ta Coates. Uh, John A. Powell, prominent legal scholar and intellectual uh, who, who now heads a really important program up at UC Berkeley. And Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Cullors 
uh, on stage with my morning co-host, Kat Brooks. It's an incredible collection. Um, these are talks you can't get anywhere else. And every single person who donates at any amount right now gets them. 1-800-439-5732. All you have to do is give us an email address with your pledge. We will send you the link with your confirmation. Uh, and, and we have gone to great lengths to make this accessible. We, we have not locked down the content particularly hard. So when you get the KPFA Abolish Racism collection, uh, you can reshare that with whoever you want, with whoever you think needs the information, might suddenly be open to the information because of what's in the news uh, and share away at no additional cost. 1-800-439-5732, 1-800-HEY-KPFA. Liam, we're down to our final minute and 50 seconds. Brian, you got to let me know, how close are we? How close are we to meeting this challenge? How many callers do we need in the next three minutes to call in to put us over the top? Liam? Yes. I hate to break it to you. We have made our $1,000 sustainer challenge. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Everything at this point on is just gravy and, oh. um, and people just we get to share our about this racism collection with. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, sorry. To be, I'm sorry, so to be Mr. Really, I'm Max. I've been holding my breath since the top of the hour, and uh, whew, that is a relief. Thank you, everyone out there who has been calling in, donating, sending the messages. You can hear the joy in my heart right now because I'm honestly just uh, every time I come on the air, you know, I'm feeling like, oh, we might not do it this time. We might not make it, but you guys came through. Thank you so much. I practically have tears in my eyes right now. Uh, this is just amazing. It just makes me so happy and so thrilled to know that, uh, you know, Brian, you and I did our part this afternoon to help K keep KPFA on the air. And, you know, we're just part of this long tradition. You know, KPFA has been around for decades and decades and decades. And, you know, with listeners like this, it's just going to keep going on bigger and better and stronger into the future going forward. And uh, that just, oh, my gosh, I'm just so happy to hear that we hit our goal again. It's fun to hear you happy, Liam. Uh, just about 20 <laughs> seconds left for you to make him even happier. 1-800-439-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. Thank you so much to all of you who pledged. Uh, apologies if I didn't get to your name in time. It turns out to be a very long list. And Liam, thank you for the work you do uh, getting new episodes of East Bay yesterday up on our airwaves every other week. Oh, my pleasure. I'm working on several more episodes that I'm very, very excited about. And uh, some of them should be coming out relatively soon. Just sneak preview uh, just to give people a little heads up. I've actually got an episode coming out next month about the history of Oakland's official bird. Some of you may know what that is, but if you don't, you're going to have to tune into East Bay yesterday in the coming weeks to find out. It's the night, Heron. Stay. Isabel Wilkerson. All of those people that you listen to in Motown, they are all the children of the Great Migration. In fact, many of them might not have existed had there been no Great Migration. Diana Ross's parents, for example, her mother migrated from Alabama and her father from West Virginia. They met in Detroit, and here you have it. Um, the same with uh, the others in the Supremes, Aretha Franklin, her parents had come up from the South as well. The Jackson Five, their, the mother came from, um, came from uh, Alabama, the father from Arkansas. They met up in the North, outside of Chicago settled in Gary, and you have all these things that would never have existed. All of those people were related to the Motown sound, which would not have existed had there been no Great Migration. From KPFA's new Abolish Racism audio collection, our gift to you right now, when you pledge at kpfa.org. Hi, this is Alice Walker. In these difficult times, I can't imagine living in a world without KPFA. Please donate what you can today. Hi, this is Jeff Chang. For years, KPFA has been a beacon for all of us in times of political darkness and lack of hope. Let's stand with KPFA now. Please donate what you can today. Hi, folks. This is Rebecca Gordon. We're living through some pretty hard times these days, and I can't imagine doing it without KPFA. Please donate whatever you can today. Thank you. Donate today by calling 1-800-439-5732 or online at kpfa.org. 
You're listening to 94.1 KPFA, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, and online at kpfa.org.